Hi everyone, welcome back to another uh, tutorial and this time I'm doing um, something really easy that beginners can make from start to finish. Um, this kit, unfortunately I'm not going to be offering this um, online because for the simple reason is I don't have enough uh, supplies in pearl wise. I, I could go buy some um, of these freshwater pearls but if you can't get them and there's a color that you want um, you're gonna have to inbox me and if I have that color I will try my best to throw a kit together for you um, just so you have everything here unfortunately I probably don't have enough of these uh, mother are these freshwater pearls in um, a potato bead like that it's like a nugget bead so anyways um, with this project, what I'm going to show you, uh, you can make it with six millimeter pearls, you can make it with uh, four millimeter pearls, you can make it with whatever pearls you want. You can use mother of pearl, freshwater pearls, you can, the possibilities for this necklace is endless. It's just a really um, simple, pretty, and it's very delicate and it looks so beautiful on the neck. And this is all going to depend on how much supplies you want to use, and I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, before I show you the necklace, I want to show you the supplies you're going to need for this necklace. You're going to need um, either a freshwater pearl, you can use 6mm, 8mm, you can use whatever you want um, in one color. You're going to need a 4mm pearl, and um, I'm using blue, and in this necklace I'm going to show you I used white. You're going to need whatever color 4mm crystal bicones you want to use. I'm using crystal AB. You're going to need two 3mm or 2mm, um, uh, what are these called? <laughs> crimp beads. You're going to need two crimp bead caps with the um, top piece. They're like a clamshell. So these are clamshell, they cover the, the crimp bead. You're going to need a piece of extender chain. You're going to need a lobster clasp. You're going to need four five millimeter jump rings. I have four here. And this is a six millimeter closed jump ring. And that will just be for the end to close your um, necklace with your lobster clasp. You are going to need, <coughs> excuse me, two inches, two two piece of two inches of chain. Now before I get going and showing you the necklace. Let me just show you quickly how I cut my chain so that both sides of the chain is um, exactly the same size. So you can take a needle or a head pin, which, whatever you've got on hand, and you're going to just put your one end of your chain on the needle or head pin. Hang on, I kind of need to wear glasses. I can't see what I'm doing here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's too delicate. There we go. Life. Alright, so you're going to put one end on your needle like that. You're going to take the rest of your chain. Now this one I measured out and it's a two inch piece. Now in order to get the other one to be exact same size, it's impossible to try and measure it on a ruler and cut it and get it exact same. So this is all I do is I take a piece of my chain I pull it down like this, measure it, and I can see that I need to cut it right here. So I'm going to hold it here. So this is here. You just hold it carefully and you snip your chain off snip one loop. I'm using a Rolo chain. It's a beautiful, it's only a four millimeter Rolo chain, but it's perfect. So now you should have two pieces exactly the same size. That's just a little tip. And most jewelers, people that make um, jewelry, do that with a head pin or a needle. And I'm just using a needle because that's all I have on my board here. Okay, so let's get to this really pretty necklace and show you what what I have for us to make today. 
Let me get all this stuff out of my way. I kind of need a little bit of room on my um, bead mat here. This is what you would call invisible necklace. And this is what we're going to make. And when this is on your neck, it is so pretty. Now, why we call it invisible necklace is because there's nothing showing here that's holding on these beads. And I'm going to show you how to do this. You can barely see the monofilament fishing line. You can see it when you're sitting here looking at it, but when you have this on your neck, you cannot see that uh, fishing line. It just sits on your neck so beautiful. So I done it in, I'm just showing you, this is six millimeter pearl. These are four millimeter bicones and we have four millimeter white pearls. So you can do it whatever color you want. This is their focal beads, would be these, the, uh, the big green ones here. Anyways, it's super easy, super simple, and it's super pretty. And just this bicone in here kind of adds a little tiny bit of sparkle when you're wearing it, especially in the evening. It just looks so pretty. And you can make a bracelet, you can make earrings to match this. I did make a few sets of this for my sister because she absolutely loved this. And when she wore it out, oh my God, it looks so beautiful on her. You just couldn't see. The pearls just hung like this on her. It was just gorgeous. So I'm going to dump all my materials here and get a little bit organized. And I'll be back to show you what to do. Okay, to get started now, you're going to take your monofilament fishing line and you're going to cut four 36 inch lengths and the reason I say 36 inch lengths is because they're going to end up not being as big as you think once we get done doing what we're doing and once you've gotten your four pieces put your all four ends together like so and let me bring the camera up just so you can see what we're doing okay so you're going to take all four of your ends and kind of push them all together like that. Then you're going to take your um, clamshell cover and you're going to string through all four pieces through one end of your clamshell so it's facing up. Whoops. So it's facing upward. All right. Let that fall into your hand there and keep your ends, try to keep them nice and uh, straight because then you need to pick up your crimp bead, which is right there, and you want to get all four pieces into that crimp bead, like so. And then you're going to take your pliers, and I don't use crimp pliers, I don't like them, and go to the end as much as you can and crimp the bead there. Just squish it with your pliers. All right, good and tight. And then any extra thread that you have left over, you're just going Hi to cut it to... off. Sorry about that. You're just going to cut this piece off with your scissors. And then pull your clamshell cover up and close that up with your pliers. Simple and easy. And hide that bead inside this cover and then you've got your four pieces of fishing line all inside that cover so that's one end done of your um, necklace complete so now let me show you what you got to do um, next once you've gotten all four of your or threads cut and crimped in the end you're going to have an opened end now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've started stringing my beads and the reason I did this is because it's very time-consuming and I really want you to see as you go how easy this is and how no knowledge whatsoever you need to <laughs> do this so I've gone ahead and strung on the beads on three pieces so far of my um, fishing line. 
So I'm going to take my last piece. As you can see, there is no particular order I used to string on these beads. Just string on whatever, however far apart you want to put them, how close, how, however you want to do it, that's the way you're going to do it. So you start with one piece of, so say there's none here, you start off with one piece close to your clamshell where you've, you've closed it off there. You're going to take one end of your, uh, filament and you're going to pick up any bead you want. So I'm going to pick up a crystal this time first and I'm going to let it fall all the way down to my clamshell here and I'm going to place it right there because as as you put these beads on all your strings you want to kind of stagger them. So I'm going to do it this way. So what you do is let it fall there, position it kind of where you want it, wrap this around your finger for now, take your end and you've put your, you've strung your bead on there here. You're going to go back through that bead you just strung on like so. So take it, take your thread here and go back through the bead as if you're putting on a stop bead and pull your thread ever so gently so you do not kink this thread or fire line or monofilament you do not want to kink this so I'm going to carefully bring my crystal back up to where I want it like there and I'm going to lock it into place by pulling this line like that. So now that bead is securely locked into place. Now, like I said, no particular order. Pick up any random bead you want. I'm going to pick up a freshwater pearl this time. I'm going to string this on, let it fall to the crystal, and kind of position it. If you want to take a look at your previous work as you're doing all your lines, you might want to position it like right there. So let's wrap it around your finger and go back through the pearl. Like so. And pull. And try not to pull hard or fast and kink your line because if you kink it, it's going to stay that way. You can't fix monofilament line it's not like fishing line so I'm trying to get where I want to position this before I lock it into place so I kind of want it right there between those ones and I'm gonna lock it there so now you can see I have no random order of stringing on these these pearls none whatsoever or beads just go along put them on so now let's put a blue, dark blue one on. So let's string this one on. Let it fall to the bottom. And I'm just going to position them however. I'm not going to do any specific amount. And I'm going to go back through the pearl, making a circle, like so. And say I want it there, maybe I want it there, it could be anywhere. I'm going to lock it in place and it's there. And we have that. Now you're going to take another bead and you're just going to continue doing this on all four strands of your monofilament. And you want to go about 16 inches if you want an 18 inch bracelet or necklace you want to go about 16 inches in stringing these beads on because you have your chain your two inches of chain on each side so that's an additional four inches there in length and you want to quit stringing them about there they could all be the same lengths um, they're not going to end up being the same lengths, and I'm going to show you this because it just depends how many beads you string on, how you string them on, 
it just depends on that so it's not going to end up this is how it ended up in the end so here is one end right here and here is one end and here's one end so it's going to end up being um, different lengths and that's what you want so continue to do all four of your strands as I have done like so and I will come back and show you how to finish off the ends join your lobster clasp and put your crimp bead back on your or I'll put your crimp bead on your other ends all right so continue doing that if you need me I'll show you one more time <coughs> I'm gonna put a dark blue pearl on and I'm gonna go in there like so let it fall so it's sitting here I'm going to wrap it around my finger make it easier for me to go back through the pearl like that <coughs> excuse me and then just give it a little pull and that's it that's all there is to stringing on these beads and I'll come back and show you how to finish this in a brief minute okay so now you've gotten all your beads strung on to your um, monofilament and you've got four ends here. So what you need to do now is pick all four of your ends up carefully, pulling your bead on, and you're going to try and stagger your beads close to each other like this. Okay. Try to do that. This is very finicky and challenging to do, but you can get it done. You can do it. So you kind of want to cluster them together like this. Same way you have on the other end of your um, the other end. So now you want to take all four of these pieces carefully. This is going to be a bit of a challenge getting all four of these into this crimp bead cover because this is what we need to put on first. So I'm going to start with the longest one first, the next one, next two, like I said, it's not going to be easy. I got two on, three on, and now we just need to snake that one in. So we've got, oh, missed. Let's get that one in there. There we go. So now we've got everything inside the bead cap. Now to get the crimp bead on and you can open these bead caps up more with your fingers because oops I dropped one and we're gonna just push it in here this is not easy I promise you I should have left a little bit longer thread, but you live and learn. Now I need to get my crimp bead in there. That's what I need to do. And it's a tough way to do it, but it's got to be done. So what I'm going to do is take my crimp bead very lightly into my pliers like this. And then I'm going to work it in, trying to grab all the pieces of 
the fishing line without missing any. And I'm only seeing three in here. All right. Where did the other one go? One sec. Okay, sorry. Um, it's this one here that's giving me the havoc. So I'm going to try and get it through here and through the crimp bead. Oh my gosh, I did it. Okay, I'm going to hold this for dear life. Hold it, hold it, hold it, dear life. And crimp that bead really fast. Oh. Did I do it? Oh my gosh, I did. So now I'm going to pinch it everywhere. Opening my crimp bead cover. Oh my gosh caught it all. Okay, perfect. Now you're going to trim this off. All your ends. And don't leave such short ends like I just did because that was just dumb. And that's it. Close up your cap. And I still have the strings here. Hang on. I thought I got them all, but I didn't. There we go. Now we got them all. And I'm going to help close this with my fingers. Just because I stretched it open too much. And close it up. Now, I, that was challenging, I know. You have all four of your pearls strung on. And like I told you before... They're not all going to be the same length, which is which is fine. Look at how pretty this is. And it's really pretty on the neck. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so now that you've gotten your both your ends on like this, the easy part's coming. That was the hard part, challenging part. You're going to take a jump ring, open one of your 5mm jump rings, like so. Hook one end of your clamshell cover and one piece of your chain into that 5mm jump ring. And we will close it up. Oops, I need another pair of pliers. Alright. I'll just use these round nose because that's what I have close to me. Alright, so you're just going to close up your jump ring. Nice and tight. There. And you're going to do that on the other side. You're going to open your jump ring. I just use my fingers. You're going to put one end, the other end of your clamshell, other piece of your chain on, and you're going to close this up, like so. Make sure it's good and closed. Now, there is part of your necklace almost finished. And now all we're going to do is add our closure on this piece and our extender chain. Now you're going to open up another jump ring. Take your one end of your chain and add your chain on there and add your lobster clasp. 
Uh oh, my battery. Okay, sorry about that. My battery died. So, like I was telling you, pick up your lobster class, and I have to do this again. And you're going to close this up really quick. And nice and straight. Make sure that's closed good and straight. All right, do the same thing on the other end. This time you're going to pick up your um, extender chain. And we're not going to use this closed jump ring because we just used the extender chain instead of that piece. So add that, add your piece of extender chain, and close this up. Nice and tight. And that's it. Your necklace is done. So now you can do it up on wherever you want, however length you want it on your extender chain. And there is your beautiful necklace. Is that not gorgeous? And it sits on your neck so pretty, it's invisible. You can't see the thread, the, the fire or the fishing line. It's so gorgeous. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.